Which one you want, Lungo? Yeah. I mean, the tank camps in general is very relaxed. We have a nice atmosphere, we know each other for a long time. I mean, I'm doing tiny camps for eight, year, eight years with Peter and uh, Magnus, so we know each other very well. We always do a lot of sport, which is good for him because he gets into shape. It's also good for me because I get into shape as well. <laughs> as a Russian, I can say, like, uh, comparing to, to Russian camps, it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, have, I have worked in a different team before. It was, yeah. uh, let's put it like that, tougher. But yeah. um, I think it goes along that we're trying to build team spirit, also trying to get some input from, from Magnus. We are mainly trying to make the opening phase not important uh, in a way, rather than sort of try to, to dominate. I think that will be the Russian style or, or the one I worked for before, right? To try yeah, to yeah, do, do, so, do, yeah, do, I think it's different. exactly the opposite, yeah. Well, here you're up against someone who's probably also spent uh, half a year together with a team. So, I mean, the strategy becomes a bit more, and as Daniel says, that most of the things will never be seen. I mean, well, I think I worked for, for another guy before Magnus, and we had like a three, three month uh, training camp that basically was useless in the sense that uh, well our opponent uh, came with some surprising ideas we hadn't seen and then basically we could throw it all not throw it out because it was extremely useful later but for the match it had absolutely no relevance and mm -hmm. i think we're expecting similar things here so we are trying to well we're trying to ca cover everything no honestly i think i will never see this position again in the, like especially in the match when it comes to world championship match it's like really high stakes and then you start being paranoid and then you can spend some, like, really lots of time for checking something completely insane. When it comes to the memory part for Magnus, when, when it's his time to see all your work and start memorizing, how does that actually work? No, but first of all, he has a brilliant memory, actually. I mean, it's literally unbelievable, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, it's quite often that, let's say, like, you, you work on something for, like, a few days, then you sh show him once, then three days later, we have a conversation, and I don't remember what the move is, but he does. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's obviously a very decent start for... Uh, for a chess player to, to have such a memory. I think I'm holding. Do you want to draw, mister? This game will not go good for me. No. Wouldn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so playing these games, Magnus, is that part of how you remember all the work that is done in this room? Well, I mean, it helps you, uh, helps you understand the position a bit positions a bit better. There are summaries of, of the work uh, that, I, uh, that I look at, so I try to remember it, try to understand it, and uh, I eventually uh, play it in, in the games. So anything new today? Something I should know? Well, I notice is something like this. Takes, takes, castle with a short, uh, small advantage. You believe in this for life? I mean, it's just a Berlin with uh, with a knight instead of a bishop, what's not to like? Okay, so let's say bishop c4 after king f2. Yeah, but what's your idea? I mean, so king g3? Bishop d4. Knight d4? Bishop d4. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. King h3. King g6? Yeah, king g4. Yeah, then it's called just a draw. Yeah, I think it's the draw. Mm -hmm. 